Hey everyone, we're here today to discuss the LED grow light kits that we've put together recently. This is our third version and one of the major changes amongst the other changes is our tent. Before we used to use a standard silver line tent, we've now gone to white tent. A lot of our customers are asking, why do a white tent? Why go to it? Everyone's used to seeing this kind of silver line tent. And as lighting nuts, we'll tell you why. There ha it has to do with the efficiency of the reflectivity of this tent. So what we did is we chose a tent that's going to get more out of the same light than if you're using the same light in a silver tent. So by putting the same exact light into a white tent, we're going to literally get more yield out of it because of the increased reflectivity. So we thought it'd be worthwhile to demonstrate to you exactly why this is and how it's done and what happens with the light bouncing around inside. So we brought our Chief Science and Technology Officer Kevin on site here today to have walk you through the experiment, what we did, and the results of it. Let's check out the test. Hello, I'm Kevin, the Chief Science and Technology Officer with Black Dog LED. And for this light reflectance test, we have selected two identically sized tents. Uh, these both are supposedly four by four foot tents. They both actually measure 46 and a half inches from the bar to the bar. And uh, the only real difference is the Gorilla Grow tent here is a little bit shorter than the Bud Box tent. So actually in theory of reflection, uh, there's more surface area for light to be reflected off of in the Bud Box tent, meaning it should be a weaker reflection. We're not disadvantaging the Gorilla Grow tent in this test. We're purely going to be looking at the actual reflectivity of the surface itself. Now we've got these two tents set up. The idea is we have our light. We're going to use exactly the same light. We're going to move this over to the other tent after we do the first test. The light is aiming down as you would normally have it. It's exactly 46 inches above the floor and it's exactly centered in the tent. We have literally taped multiple different sensors to the light itself. These sensors are a spectroradiometer. This is a black comet spectroradiometer from StellarNet. It is taped to the top of our light and it will be aiming at the door area. Once we get the uh, test up and running, we'll actually shut the doors to the tents. And then over here on this side, we have a Apogee quantum par meter. Uh, this was one of their new Apogee extended range quantum par meters that we're testing out for them but it's also aiming at the side of the tent. So we're only going to be seeing reflected light. We're not gonna be seeing a lot of light because it's only light that literally bounced off the floor, hit another wall to get back to that sensor in all cases. These sensors are above the actual surface of the light. We're not seeing any direct light from the light. It's only reflected light that we're going to see. That should make this a fair test. So let's take a closer look. All right, so we're taking a closer look at exactly how we've set up the sensors here. It's literally taped down on the light, so when we move the light to the next tent, this isn't going to move. Same thing with this sensor. It's just taped on the side of the light. They're aimed directly at the sides of the tent, not down, not up, but directly at the sides of the tent. And we're going to start off by closing up the tent flaps here, the doors, and we'll take a reading with the uh, PAR meters and make sure that they both agree there's no light in there. And then we'll turn on the light and see what they read, and then we'll repeat that with the next tent. All right, so we're gonna shut up the tents. We'll make sure that our sensors read zero, and then we will turn on the light and see what each reads. All battened down. And let's take a look at the Apogee quantum meter. And it is reading zero PPFD in there. It's not seeing any light whatsoever, it's zero. Let's take a look at the reading from the spectroradiometer. It is also seeing exactly zero light in there. So we're completely dark in there. Let me plug in the light. And we will give it a second to warm up. And you can see as it's warming up, our quantum flux meter here is going up 
and it seems to have settled out at about 98. This is the sensor that's aiming at the left wall of this tent. So 98 PPFD is what it's seen reflected off the side of the tent material. The spectroradiometer that is aimed at the front, right at the front door, is seeing about 51 PPFD. It's aiming at a slightly higher level, so we could expect it to be seeing a little bit less, but seeing right at 51. So we've got 98 and 51 for this silver lined tent. So the light is off and we'll plug it in and let it warm up. And we've got a soft start on the light. And you can see the quantum flux meter is seeing 97, very close to the 98 we just saw. And the spectroradiometer is seeing 50, just one less than what we just saw. So this is pretty repeatable. We're seeing consistent PAR levels from both sensors. Now they're different levels because they're aimed at different sides of the tent and they're at different heights but we're seeing 97, 98 on the quantum flux meter and 50 to 51 on the spectroradiometer. All right, so we've moved our Phytomax 2 1000 with the sensors still taped to it in exactly the same spot to the bud box tent, the white line tent. Now we've made sure the light is again 46 inches off of the ground, exactly 46 inches, it's nice and level, and it's perfectly centered in the tent 13 inches from every side. So we can do another test with this. Now I'd like to point out that this tent is actually not brand new. In fact, we've used this one before and it's actually a little bit dirty, unlike the brand new Gorilla tent that we just tested. So this one is at a disadvantage because there's actually dirt on the walls and the floor already. All right, so we'll shut up the flaps and make sure that we're reading zero on all of the meters. Make sure we don't have any light leaks. So with the light off, our quantum flux meter is showing zero PPFD and our spectroradiometer is also showing zero PPFD. So let's plug in the light. Give it its warm up period. We see the numbers climbing. So the quantum flux meter seems to be stabilizing at about 202 and the spectroradiometer is showing 89. So 202 and 89. Let's do that again. Let's unplug the light and take a closer look. So with everything off, we see zero on both meters. And when we plug in the light, let it warm up. Whoops. So we're seeing 201. I saw 202 earlier on the quantum flux meter, and we're still looking at 89 on the spectroradiometer. So we'll call it 201 and 89. All right, so let's analyze the results of this test again. We were using the Apogee PAR meter, which was on the side of the light aiming at the side of the tent. So we can see all of the reflected light that's coming off of this wall, but it's not seeing the light directly underneath the light. It's just seeing reflected light. When we ran that in the Gorilla Grow tent, we saw a 98 and 97 PPFD. When we ran that in the uh, Bud Box tent, we saw 202 and 201 PPFD. Even in the worst case scenario between those measurements, we're seeing a 106% increase in the amount of light that this PAR meter saw coming off of that wall. That's a big increase in reflectivity. But that's not the only test we did. We also had our StellarNet spectroradiometer here sitting on top of the light 
aimed at the front door so that when the doors were shut, when we were running the test, it was seeing the light, again, completely blocked from the bottom. The light here is physically blocking all of the light that's hitting the floor. We're just looking at the wall with this test. Whereas theoretically, the Apogee could have seen maybe some of the light being reflected off the floor. This is only seeing light that's being reflected off the wall. When we ran that in the Gorilla Grow tent, we saw 51 and 50 PPFD. When we ran that in this Bud Box tent, we saw 89 PPFD both times that we actually measured it. Now, that again, in the worst case scenario, this Bud Box tent saw a 75% increase in the amount of light being reflected off the walls. So, in the worst case scenario, the worst number we got was a 75% increase in reflected light because of this white tent material instead of the so-called ultra-reflective silver. Turns out the ultra-reflective silver isn't actually that reflective. So why is it that this white material was reflecting so much more? I mean, everyone knows that silver surfaces are more reflective, right? Well, it turns out that's incorrect. Uh, in fact, mylar, we all think is very reflective, but it actually only reflects about 70% of the light that hits it. Whereas a flat white surface like this can actually reflect 92 to 93%. Some flat white surfaces even reflect 96% of all the light that's hitting them. The difference is when you're looking into a mirror or surface like mylar, it's throwing away the photons that are not aimed back in exactly the right direction to form an image in your eye. So it looks very reflective to us because we can see ourselves in it. We can literally see our own reflection in it, but the reason we can see our reflection in it is because it's throwing away all the photons that might be aiming the wrong direction that would otherwise cause the image to be blurry. Flat white surfaces look flat white to us because they are bouncing back far more photons. They're just doing it in a very random direction. The photons are bouncing off completely randomly, so we can't see an image in the white surface. But far more photons are actually being reflected back. If you're paying to make this light. You might as well get more free light by having the inside of your uh, tent be white instead of silver you're going to see a dramatic increase in yield from the additional reflectivity from this tent as opposed to a silver line tent. It's free light. You might as well you take advantage of it. We encourage you to try this test yourself if you'd like. All it takes is a light meter. Aim it away from the light itself and close up your tent. See how reflective it is. You can try it with different materials. But it turns out a white line tent makes a huge difference in terms of the total amount of light that your plants are actually going to be receiving. So as Kevin just explained, when you make an investment in our LED grow light kits or even our lights, we want you to get the most out of them. So a tent that's robbing your photons, stealing your yields is not what we want to provide you. Our goal is always to provide the maximum benefit, whether using our lights or our grow kits. So just one more reason that Black Dog LED is a grower's best friend. Thanks for joining us for this test and keep tuning in. Have a great day.